I'm looking for the perfect camera. I'm currently shooting with the Canon R5, but I'm thinking about switching to either the Nikon Z9 or the Sony Alpha 1. And right now I'm gonna be taking pictures of Kayla and seeing how each one handles portraits. Now, I'm not just looking for the best portrait camera. I'm looking for the best overall camera for me. That means it has to do landscapes and travel, portraits and wildlife, which is going to be the most challenging photographic thing I'm gonna be putting these cameras through. So for now, if you look over here, you'll see I have all three camera setups and I have the lenses to go with them to test each system. You might not be in the market for a $4,000 plus dollar camera, and I understand that. I do this for a living, and so I'm always testing the best gear. Luckily, my sponsor, KEH, has a bunch of budget options, and I'm gonna recommend them down here in the description. So if you're looking for something great on a budget, use up to 40% less than retail. They test it, they have a 180 day warranty. You can trust them and they have over 66,000 things in inventory at KEH. Plus we have a 5% coupon if you go down here and if you sell your gear to them, you can get a 5% bonus. So thank you KEH and let's get started on these pictures. This is the Sony Alpha 1. And at $6,500, it is the most expensive of the three cameras. It has 50 megapixels, 30 frames per second. And for portraits alone, it's a little bit overkill. But like I said before, this is a part of a greater series. And so this has other capabilities I'll need in my next video for wildlife. One advantage that I noticed with Sony is it has a flash sync speed of 1 400th of a second. The Canon's is 1 250th, which is pretty standard, but Nikon left out a mechanical shutter altogether. And a lot of people praise this, but the thing is now their sync speed is only 1 200th of a second. That might not matter for some of you, but I noticed when I was taking action shots of Kayla's hair, the Sony was freezing it better. I think that the flash sync speed is gonna make a difference if you have movement in your portraits in the studio. The next camera is the Canon R5. And at $3,900, it is the least expensive of the three. It has 45 megapixels, five fewer megapixels than the Sony, but I don't think you're gonna notice the difference. All three cameras have two card slots, so you don't have to worry about losing all of your clients' photos. One thing that the Canon R5 has that the other two do not is a fully articulating screen that turns around so you can see the front. This might not matter to you, but I love it because I often take video of myself and I'm a big fan of taking self portraits. It's a great way to get practice on a model if you don't like that awkward interaction. <laughs> this is the Nikon Z9 and it's the largest of the three cameras and it's almost twice the weight. One thing I noticed is that the Nikon does actually get a little bit cumbersome, especially since I always seem to be holding something else, whether it be a prop in the foreground or a reflector. I know that I could put things on stands, but I typically don't. This little bit of extra weight might make a difference to me. It might not matter to you at all. Maybe you prefer that it has this built-in battery because you're shooting all day at weddings or something. Consider if you care more about the weight or the extra battery. For me, I'd rather carry a little battery in my bag and have a lighter setup in my hand. Has 30 frames per second. I don't think for portraits you have to worry about those upper limits with the frames per second, but we'll definitely get into that in my next video about wildlife. Something I really appreciate about all three of these cameras is that they all have eye detection autofocus. So they'll find the eye when you're taking a picture, make sure that that's your autofocus point and you can take a picture. And this is really easy because that means if you're recomposing your shot and your model's moving, you don't have to move around the joystick to find the autofocus point on the eye and then take a picture, it's automatically doing that for you. So it makes the process of taking portraits a little more streamlined. I did a test with all three cameras. Each camera had their own 70 to 200 millimeter F2.8 lens. I took all of the pictures at F2.8 and then I made Tony stay still and do the same movements for every portrait to try to make it fair. The Alpha 1 had the best results. I think that the Canon was almost tied, but the Alpha 1 snapped into focus a little bit faster, and that would be good if you were taking pictures of models who are moving around a little bit, portraits, or if they're flipping their hair. The Canon R5 also had incredible results. It didn't have any problem tracking Tony's eyes, and almost all of them were perfectly in focus. Some of them were maybe slightly off, and by that I mean maybe they're focusing on the eyelash instead of the eye. That's something you notice if you're at f2.8 and 200 millimeters. The Nikon Z9 also has very good IAF 
but this one was not as reliable as the other two cameras. It was front focusing quite a bit, sometimes on Tony's eyebrow, sometimes on the lashes. It mostly nailed the pictures when he was looking directly at the camera, but as soon as I had him look at three quarters or in profile, it was losing the eye. So it's still a good usable function on the Z9, but not quite as precise as the Canon and the Sony. That having been said, Nikon has been making huge improvements over the last few years, so I think they'll be caught up shortly. When you're choosing a camera body, you have to also consider the glass for a few reasons. You have to make sure that the glass that you want is available in a sharp version of that lens. So you might want to shoot 70 to 200 and find out that your camera that you're picking doesn't have the best 70 to 200 of the bunch. The other thing is the price. The Canon body is the least expensive at $3,900, but the glass is actually the most expensive. So when you're pricing out your system, make sure you're not just looking at the body or a lens, but the entire system that you might want put together. You're probably wondering why I have so many lenses and it's because I use different lenses for different things. So the 24 to 70 is not only a great portrait lens, but it's also just a great all around lens. And this is a lens that I tend to keep on my camera all the time. This focal length is good for travel. It's good for just around town shooting. It's great for portraits, especially now that some wide angle portraits are more in style. But you can also zoom in to 70 millimeters and get a little more compression, get a little more background blur and get that more classic professional portrait look. If you're looking for extreme bokeh, if you're looking for something really different and you want to utilize taking photos in lower natural light, the 85 millimeter F one two just looks different. You can just tell the difference between the photos. The bokeh is so smooth and beautiful. You get this look like your subject is just popping right out of the picture. For each system, you can see the one lens I have in common is the 70 to 200. And I think that's considered like the classic professional portrait lens. It goes from 70 to 200. So you get 70 more wide angle. Once you go to 200, you get a lot of compression. And that's especially flattering if someone has deeper features, a longer nose like I do would be compressed. So that can be a very flattering lens. So let's get into it. First, we have the Sony Alpha 1 and we have the 70 to 200 F2.8 G Master 2. So this is the second version. It's more expensive at $2,700 and I'll be testing this to see how sharp it is. Zoomed into 102 millimeters at F8. Really beautiful and clean. Let's raise those shadows perfectly in focus, nice and crisp. The skin looks great, the texture looks great, the contrast, we'll look for some chromatic aberration and specular highlights, and everything looks really good and clean. Same here at 83 millimeters, this is an edited photo, it looks great. The next is the 85 millimeter F1.4, and this is a little bit older, it's $1,800, and we'll see how this stands up against the newer lenses. Again, beautifully sharp. This eye's in focus now. You can see the skin looks nice and sharp and great contrast. This is edited again. We can look at the braids here and here and there's no chromatic aberration. The out of focus specular highlights look really nice and clean. This is the 85 millimeter lens open all the way up to F1.4 in natural light with backlighting. This is a far more challenging scenario. This is where I started to see that 85 have some issues. It's a little softer, but it looks a little mushy right here in the specular highlights. Here it is again, there's a lot of chromatic aberration. That can be fixed in Lightroom. If you're not pixel peeping, I don't think anyone would notice if you're gonna be doing a lot of edits anyway. I do think this is the weakest lens in the lineup. This is the 50 millimeter F12 and it is $2,000. At F8, it looks beautifully sharp again. Let's go to the unedited photo so you can see a little more clearly and I'll raise the shadows of her eye. It looks like her back eye was caught in focus. That's not great, but overall great contrast, looks really good. And I'm not seeing chromatic aberration or anything like that. I know these prices are crazy. This is high-end professional camera gear. If you're looking for something more on a budget, I'm gonna have some suggestions coming up shortly. I use the Sony 16 to 35 because I don't like the Sony 24 to 70, the first version. The second version's great. We've tested it. It's perfect, but it's not shipping yet, so I don't have a copy. <music> 
And this is already cropped heavily, so we're not gonna zoom in and see a, a ton of sharpness, but it's sharp, no chromatic aberration or anything like that. It looks clean. And this is an uncropped photo, just so you can see that it's, it's heavily cropped and it still looks pretty sharp. Next, let's talk about that expensive Canon glass. This is the 70 to 200 f2.8, and it is $2,800. Look how much smaller the Canon 70 to 200 is. That matters to me because that's that much more room I have in my bag versus the Sony or the Nikon. shot at f8 again and this is shot at 104 millimeters everything is in focus really sharp lashes i'll raise those shadows again so that you can see that her irises are perfectly sharp you can see here from the reflection of my softbox and it's really nice let's zoom in here no chromatic aberration in these areas uh, the blurred out areas look really nice 79 millimeters f8 and again everything looks really clean it looks great it's sharp what more could you ask for she has perfect skin, so this resolution is not going to bother someone like her, and it looks wonderful. The 85mm f1.2 is a really special, beautiful lens. This is also $2,800. Everything is super sharp. Her eyes are dark, so I'm going to lighten the shadows just so you can see that everything is sharp here. Her hair is not showing any chromatic aberration. The out of focus areas look really smooth and creamy and clean. And this is an edited photo so that you can see what a final result might look like. And this is really beautiful. This is the unedited version so you can see the raw colors and everything. This is the 50 millimeter F12. This is $2,400. Shot it at f8 to make sure a lot of stuff is in focus. Let's zoom in here and see the results. This is zoomed into 200%, so it's really close. And you can see everything is super sharp. It looks beautiful. Let's look at her dark hair against the light background. I don't see any chromatic aberration. And the out of focus areas and the specular highlights and everything look nice and clean. This 50 millimeter lens is beautiful and a great all around lens and also a great portrait lens. And this is the 24 to 70 F2.8 and it is $2,300. Again, shot at f8, 48 millimeters. And again, I'm not seeing chromatic aberration. Everything looks super clean, even at 200 millimeters. I mean, who could possibly complain about this? Nikon lenses by comparison seem like a bargain. This is the 70 to 200 and it's $2,200. It's also an F2.8 lens. And this is that versatile all around portrait lens that a lot of pros have in their bag. at 110 millimeters and this is incredibly sharp. Look at her eyes, her eyelashes, her skin just looks gorgeous. Let's go look for that chromatic aberration and I'm not seeing anything. Uh, the out of focus areas look nice and clean and good. No complaints, just so beautiful. All these lenses are great. And one of my favorite lenses of all time is the Nikon 105 F14. And this is at F8. You can see that the colors on the Nikon are looking kind of gross, right? They're a little bit greenish, yellow. That's not Nikon's fault. These are raw files. They were the JPEGs, we could blame them for baking them in a way we didn't like, but this is actually Adobe's issue. What I do is I make a custom picture profile right here. This is beautifully sharp. There's no chromatic aberration. The specular highlights look good, even in the blurred out areas. And it's just a great lens, one of my favorites. This is the 105 again. I chose a heavily edited photo just to show you what you're gonna do anyway. Edited, of course, but oh, how beautiful. Next is the 24 to 70 F2.8, and this is about $2,000. This looks great. Again, nice and sharp. Maybe I got the tip of her nose in focus here. I didn't even notice until I zoomed in. Even at F8, it's just so shallow, but you can see it's beautifully sharp. Let's look at a little more contrasty areas. I'm not seeing any chromatic aberration there. Everything looks really clean. And then this is the 24 to 70 outside. This was a more challenging situation. There's backlighting, missed focus. I had 
I auto focus on and I noticed this was missing focus more it got her lips and her nose but other than that it looks good the contrast is pretty good considering the backlighting and this is an unedited version with the green skin I don't see any chromatic aberration good contrast just ooh, the color this is an adapted lens I have the FTZ2 adapter on it but you can get this for about a thousand dollars at KEH used and that's what I wanted to talk about budget gear you can get really great lenses from DSLR cameras put an adapter on them and then put them on your new mirrorless camera and have way more lens options for less expensive prices so that's something that you should really consider and if you're looking for less expensive lenses and bodies you should consider KEH you can get a Nikon 50 millimeter f 18 g for a $172 at KEH. If you're looking for a more budget but professional camera, you can get the Nikon D850. It has 45 megapixels and it's a bargain at $1,900 at KEH. That's still one of my favorite cameras of all time. For Sony, you can get an older 70 to 200 first version for $1,700. If you're looking for a more affordable body, you can get the Sony a7R 3 with 42 megapixels for $1,900. And for Canon, you can get the 5D Mark IV for $2,100 at KEH. Just because they're not mirrorless, they're not the newest, they're not the most expensive, doesn't mean you can't get professional looking, amazing photos. So consider checking out DSLR bodies if you're on a budget and you wanna save some money. And of course, try KEH. They have a 180 day warranty. They have over 66,000 items in stock. And you can save 5% when you buy when you use our coupon code in the description. Or if you'd like to sell your gear there, you can get a 5% bonus. So check out KEH and check out the links in the description down below. Something kind of amazing has happened as I've been testing these because just a few years ago when we were testing mirrorless cameras, we were telling people not to switch from DSLR to mirrorless. Things were flaky, like the eye detect autofocus wouldn't work. The autofocus just in general often was flaky and you were paying a premium price for technology that was not as good as older technology and DSLRs. We were pushing people away from going the mirrorless route for a time. Now I'm here reviewing the top three flagship mirrorless cameras and i like all of them i truly don't think you can go wrong i know that's not an exciting or sensational or controversial viewpoint but i'm really excited when things go well so i guess for now i'm leaning towards the sony and the canon just because the nikon is a bigger form factor for me and i'm also going to be using it for travel and landscape but Maybe the Z9 will redeem itself when it comes to wildlife photography because they have a brand new 800 millimeter lens and I'm dying to try it and that could make all the difference. If you want to see my travel and landscapes video that I already shot, that's in the description down below. If you want to see how these three cameras do in a wildlife shootout, that will be my next video. So be sure to subscribe so that you see that come up in your feed and hit the notification bell. Thank you so much, KEH, for sponsoring this video and for making buying and selling gear so, so easy. We sell all of our used gear to KEH because we've been scammed many times and we don't have to worry about that. We buy so much of our used gear from KEH because they check every single piece of gear that comes in and then make sure it's in working order and they give you a 180 day warranty so if it doesn't work send it back and they'll make sure that you're taken care of so go to keh.com and check them out our links are in the description down below thank you